All right, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to say, Kal Hala Yahweh Bashim Yahu Shai Bashim Rokakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the also great millstone. And salutations to the elect, pushing this word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about reading the Bible and, and not just the importance of it, because you should already know why it's important to read the scriptures, but how to read the scriptures, you know, according to the spirit. So, um, can you get, start off with, uh, Isaiah, uh, give me a second here. Get yeah, Isaiah 34 and 16. Because a lot of, a lot of people don't actually know how to read the Bible, right? And that's not just because it's, um, because they lack the knowledge to read it, but it's also because the Bible's not for them too, right? This book is only going to be opened to those that are of the elect, which are Israelites. Go ahead. Isaiah 34 and 16. Mm -hmm. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord mm -hmm. and read. Mm -hmm. No one of these shall fail. That's right. None shall want her mate. That's right. What does it mean by none shall want her mate? So when you go, when you came, when you come into this truth and you start reading the Bible and understanding the scriptures, you're not going to want to understand other philosophies, right? For me personally, the only time I dive into other philosophies is to further validate the Bible, further validate the, the scriptures, right? When you see a woman with multiple men, you call her a hoe, right? And you instantly, um, um, you instantly, uh, uh, attach her to disloyalty well it's the same way that most high sees you when you're reading his scriptures all right professing to be a servant but following all, all the uh, uh, all these other uh false doctrines so if you're truly of the elect if the most high has truly has chosen you you're going to read these scriptures and none shall want of their mate you're not going to want another woman you're not going to want another woman so to speak at all you're going to want this one woman and that woman only because you know this is the best of the best Mm -hmm. Right? The creme de la creme, so to speak. Go ahead. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit hath gathered them. Mm -hmm. And the them, con, go to uh, John 5 and 39. The them that is talking about is the elect. Right? Because, you know, I said this earlier, but this this truth is only for the elect. And that's, and that's um, who we're only looking to wake up. John 5 and 39. Okay. John 5 and 39. Search the scriptures, mm -hmm. for in them ye think ye have eternal life. That's right. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think you have eternal life. You know, what does it mean by having, how we, how do we have eternal life by just reading the scriptures? Well, the knowledge back in Adam, okay, the knowledge of, of, of good and evil that was the understanding of the scriptures, full understanding, right? They, because at the time Adam only knew the righteous things, on the or only knew righteous things. They didn't know anything on the left hand side. Knew everything on the right hand side. But when you search the scripture, and this is eternal life, it's because Yahweh Shai resides in here, and it's because when you read the scriptures, you end up dying for the scriptures. You know, some of us are going to taste of death. But if we, if we're the taste of death, for the cause of Yahweh by Shimei Shai, well then we are going to get eternal life. We get a crown. We get a crown, right? In the kingdom, you're going to live forever, man. So, and guess what? You won't know that until you search the scriptures. That's why it says when you search the scriptures, you'll find eternal life. Eternal life is here, right? Eternal life is the Bible, but the understanding of the Bible, right? Go ahead. And they are they which testify of me. And they are they which testify of me. So you can't truly testify of Yahweh Shai if you don't understand the scriptures. Right? It makes no sense. So if you're not a steward of the book, but yet you profess to be a Christian, how are you going to help? What's the point of calling yourself a Christian if you don't study? What happens if you, get, if you, if, if you meet someone who's not a Christian and uh, they have a tons of questions, tons, tons of questions. You're gonna call your pastor up. We're gonna set up, set up an appointment. 
<laughs> like, you know what I mean? You're supposed to be, you're supposed to have this ready. Honestly, calling yourself a servant of the Most High and not understanding the scriptures, it's like coming to work without your work clothes. Dude, what's Esau going to do? <laughs> He's going to fire you or send you back home. Right? These scriptures, you have to understand the scriptures because you're always on, on duty. You're always working. <laughs> like this job, okay, where it's not a nine to five job. You don't just clock in on the on the weekends, do your highway and byway, and then clock out. More importantly, it's not a church. That's what church do, uh, goers do. They clock in, the Christian, the Christians in church, then they clock out. It's a nine to five thing. This is year round, 24-7, 365. Right? Forever. That was uh, 39. 39? Now go to Psalms 40. And you know, like, when you're starting out in the scriptures, you're not going to know everything. That's true. You're not going to know everything. So you are going to come across people who will ask you good questions that you actually don't know the answer to. Right? The best thing to do there is to be honest. There's nothing worse than someone who doesn't know what they're supposed to know and is a liar all at the same time. That's, there's, there's no mercy for someone like that. But if you don't know everything that you're supposed to know, but you're honest about it, at least you're sincere. At the very least, you're sincere. And that's all that matters for the Most High. Because we're not, we, we don't know everything. And we're not going to know everything technically until, the, until uh, we get into the kingdom. Right? You know, the brother that read the scripture earlier, that he roughly paraphrasing that if you're to seek out, search out the scriptures, you'll find eternal life. You know, a part of eternal life is having full wisdom, full understanding of everything. How are you going to live forever and not understand everything? <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any sense. If you're going to live forever, have eternal life, well, you're going to understand everything. You know? But my point is, is if you don't understand, if you don't actually have an answer to a question, it's of the scriptures, be honest. Don't lie because of your pride and because, you know, you know, I might be of the elect, da da da, da Apostle Dahar taught me all this, that, and the third. Just tell the truth, you know. Um, 40 and 7. Okay. Psalm 40 and 7. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. It's right. Lo, I come in the volume of the book, and it's written of me. That's the how I speaking. Get um, uh, Ephesians 3 and 4, right? Because, and that's why I said earlier, you don't know your Shai if you haven't studied the scriptures. He said, lo, uh, he said, uh, lo, I come in the volume of the book, and it's written of me. You know, this whole scripture is written of you, Shai, his thoughts and everything. Ephesians 3. Well, actually, though, all the whole scriptures is a testimony to of Yahweh Shai. Everything from Adam, from Genesis 101, literally to Revelation, the last chapter, last verse, 22, I think, in like 16 or whatever. It's all, this whole book is a, it's a testimony unto Yahweh Shai. <laughs> Everything about it. That's why he said what he said. Lo, I come in the volume of the whole book. So there's different stages in the book. Each stage is a piece of Yahweh Shai. You know? That's deep. Don't choke on that. <laughs> Go ahead. Ephesians 3 and 4. Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. The mystery of Yah of, of, of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. There's a lot of mysteries to Yahweh Shai, man. A lot of mysteries. You know, one basic mystery, you know, is counterproductive or counterintuitive, but um, is is just what he looks like. What Yahweh Shai looks like. It's a mystery. You know? It's becoming a lot more evident now, but even what he's about. What's the Yahweh Shai's mentality? Like, you have to understand, those of us that the Most High has, has mercy on and has given, has opened our eyes to his knowledge, we understand the mentality of Yahweh Shai. Like, that's, that's pretty detailed. You know, I don't know any per person that, that's not in the scriptures, that's not in the truth, that can break down Yahweh Shai's, de uh, break down the details of Yahweh Shai's mind, okay, 
and according to the scriptures too. I've never had a pastor who do it. They just talk of it. They just talk about the house size, about peace, love, all these things, right? And they use certain scriptures to back up just those things only, but there's two sides to everything. Haushai is also about destruction. He also is about um, so-called uh, racism. He only loves his people, right? We know when he, we know that he's gonna come in a thief for the night, but to who? Hmm. You know, like like that's 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 something that's a mystery. People read that, but oh yeah, that means we don't know when it's coming. Yes, it's true, but it's also true that he has people on the planet that do know. Uh -huh. So a, a thief in the knife, to, or a thief in the night to who? You know, no one knows the exact day, but they're called his elect are called watchmen for a reason. You know, um, where were you at? I was at four, five. Okay, I read it again. Which in the other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit. And Brakha Yahal Bashim Yah Shai for the apostles, man. A oh. great millstone. And the elders, because they Moshe chose them and gave them the understanding, and they broke it down to a simple and plain. Very plainly, man. Right? Because they understood it that well. Right? That's why you need a teacher in this truth. You need a teacher, man. You can't every brother in this truth has a teacher. We're all teaching each other while your house is teaching all of us all at the same time. <laughs> Synchronicity. <laughs> Synchronicity, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's, that, that definitely was spiritual then, eh? It's popping oh, up yeah, now. That word. Synchronicity, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was it on that? Is there yeah, more? that was uh, just six. Okay, so we're going to close up. All right, short video, straight to the point, you know. Um, but yeah, the point of the, of, the script, of the video was to read the scriptures. But read it with intent as well, man. Understand that, like, you're not just reading because this is something you're supposed to do. You know, um, I used to study for four hours a day. I don't do that no more because I only understood an hour of what I was studying. <laughs> you know, so it's not efficient. Right? So, study in the spirit, not in the flesh. So, with that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom. And we're going to say, Kahla Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakar Kadash, double honors to the apostles, the Elsa Great Millstone. And salutations to the elect, pushing this word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth, and death and destruction to his wicked kingdom, two thirds of Israel and Esau as well. Shalom. Shalom.